I think about our country, the more I believe that this American experiment is it's a storytelling experiment. It's sort of whose story gets told, you know, and who has control over which stories get told and which stories get believed. And, and you know, for me, I, I, I grew up feeling 100% American. Right. I mean, I, I could have bled red, white, and blue as a nine-year-old child. I believed everything I had been taught, that this is America, and in America, all you have to do is work hard and believe that you're equal to everyone else and that everyone else is equal to you and nothing is impossible. Right. And I believed that. And, and it wasn't until other people let me know that I wasn't American like them that that my eyes were open to that right. and 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 the space that i have inhabited for a lot of my life the place between feeling 100% american but being told that others saw me not as that and then also feeling latina and 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 deeply rooted to my family's culture and history um, but also being told that i really wasn't that either right. so i sort of lived in a no man's land and i felt so alone and isolated in that experience and when I realized that so many other people felt that way too, I, 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 I realized that it was because our stories never get told. Right. We never see our experience woven into the narrative of what this, who, who is an American and what is an American. And I have to say, I am so upset that patriotism has been hijacked because I am a patriot. I am an American. Right. I love this country. I have always loved this country. And, my story is American. It's not immigrant American. No, I am an American. Right. And, and, I, and so I, for me, it was not just about telling my story, but it was about inviting all these other incredible um, activists and writers and athletes and people who have contributed to the American culture in phenomenal ways who, um, who don't get to tell that part of their story. And so I reached out to them and so many of them said yes, which I was so honored by. And now we have this gorgeous book that a young person can hold in their hands and see what it means to be reflected by Americans like them. Look at that, a Latina guest and a Latino host. To the people at <laughs> to the people at home, you're not watching Univision. It's okay. It's still a daily show. Listen, part of me wants you not to emphasize it because I'm afraid immigration might show up at any moment. Oh, they ain't, ain't getting me. And then again, and then I re I remember, Donald Trump's no longer president. We ain't getting deported. Right, right. I love it. You start right out of you go out of right out of the gate. I love that about you. Listen, Anna. it's only taken ten hosts for them to have a Latino host. <laughs> Who's counting? I wasn't counting. I'm really happy that you're yeah. here, and I always, I, I'm always grateful to you because you do, you are so consistent. You've been consistent your entire life in elevating voices. Oh, I have to, I have to. Elevated. Thank you, thank you. So listen, it's taken 10. Let's not f it up. Yeah, yeah, we're not going to f this up. There's no way we can. Look at this great audience that we got here. when you toss it to them. They, they just want to see themselves <laughs> on camera. Anyway, you know, Republicans are so good at coming after Latinos. I mean, they, they go to our WhatsApp, they go to our Spanish stations, they throw in the trigger, trigger words like um, uh, socialism and authoritarianism. Why are the Democrats falling behind? What, what, why, why, are we, why are the Democrats not coming after us? Listen, I think, first of all, they take it for granted, right? right? I think a lot of people thought, you know, they're not gonna vote for Donald Trump. They, I mean, that's the alternative. Right, of course right. they're gonna vote for the Democrats and that's not the way to do it. Also, people need to understand, and I don't know how long we have to say this, you can't show up six weeks before an election. And then you come have to show up. Yep. And this is the same for African-Americans, for Latinos, for any group. Put in mm. the group name. Yep, yep. Don't show up at the last right. minute and expect to gain the... And, and they have to fight hard against this socialism, communism right. type of label. I remember Joe Biden getting asked at a town hall, mm. an NBC town hall. I remember him getting asked, um, you know, your opponent, Donald Trump says that you're a socialist. Are you a socialist? 
And he laughed. Yeah, yeah. Right? He laughed and he said, do I look like a socialist? Now, I get where he's coming yeah. from. Right? If somebody said to me, Anna, you know, are you a Martian? I would laugh too. Right, right, right. <laughs> but we need more than laughter. We need him to come back with it. We need him to fight back. You know what we need him to say? What? what? We need him to say, let me tell you what socialists do. They attack the free press. They attack political opponents. Mm. They attack private businesses. Guess who's doing that in America today? Right, right, right. See? Gee, you know what's happening. You know what's up. You know what time it is. <laughs> That's why I love talking to you, because you know what, what is going on. Um, also, how we get divided sometimes. Latino people get divided. Is it us doing it? Is it them doing it to us? I mean, Nicaraguans, Cubans, Colombians, Puerto Ricans. Aren't we stronger together and better together? It's like, I mean, I, I, don't we know how to do math? Listen, by themselves, Cubans are three and a half percent. Right. Mexican Americans are 11 percent. Ooh. Together, we're Stats. almost 20 percent. And guess what? If we build alliances with other groups like African Americans, mm. yes. we are unstoppable. Black and brown together, man. Black and brown together. We're so strong together. Why aren't we getting together? The Black Caucus, the Latino Caucus in D.C. We also need the Gay Caucus because we need to accessorize. Oh yeah. <laughs> But we, you know, what we need to understand as different communities is that we can't fall victim. We can't fall prey to let's compete for the same small piece of pie. No, damn it. Give me a bigger piece of pie so that That's we right. all can eat. And we need to understand that we rise upwards together. Absolutely. It's too easy to pit us against each preach, other. Preach, mama, right? preach. It's too easy. Yeah, mamita, dale. And we have to... Because not what's, only what's do they, the, What are the problem? What is it? The problem is that we get focused on uh, did they cross the border or did the border cross us? Uh, were they political refugees or are they economic refugees? Were they rich before the revolution in Cuba, Venezuela, Nicaragua, or did they come here because they were poor? Who cares? This right. is much I know, John. Yeah. The people who hate you, the people who hate me, don't care, Papa. They don't care how much of your DNA came from Spain or how much of it came mm. from indigenous America. They care that you're a Latino and they want to otherize us. So as, yeah. as soon as, and the quicker we realize that and that we have to band together and fight against discrimination, bigotry together, the more powerful we will be and not fall prey yes. to this kind of stupidity. West Side Story is, few films, get remade with as much pressure as this one has had. Yeah. You are playing a role that is arguably one of the most important roles in not just film history, but then like in, in the history of so many Latina actresses yeah. where they go like, this was, this was it, you know? Yeah. This was the Rita Moreno moment that changed film for a lot of people. Yeah. It had an influence in your life. Yes, it did. I mean, I saw it when I was, gosh, I guess, about like six or seven, you know? And I didn't understand who she was. But I understood she sort of looked like me, and I wanted to dance just like her. And then in, not until my adulthood did I really understand the full spectrum of, of what West Side Story did for her, mm -hmm. what, what, and what she came to mean to our community. But then mm. also the struggles that she faced after winning an Oscar, you know, it's like, she became the first Latina to win an Oscar, and then all of a sudden there was no work. Right. So she had to find other ways to expand her career. And I, as it makes me very sad that that was her experience, but also when you look at her breadth of work, she showed you that Latinas are not, we don't just do this, we do this. Mm. And that's really cool. I mean, I think specifically related to West Side Story, my being Afro-Latina, that makes me especially proud of what I've been able to accomplish mm -hmm. because we really are not represented on screen. And I don't think that any film is a perfect film, but I do think the fact that we, that my inclusion in this film works, we're the beginnings of getting it right. I like that. And if Steven can do it, one of the greatest directors of all time, cause he is, um, then I think everybody else can. You're a child of immigrants. That's right. And uh, every immigrant, yes. Thank you. Thank you for that. Colombia y web. Colombia y web. Colombia y web. 
Me vale verga. Okay. Um, what do you want people to know about your experience growing up? Yeah, well, um, when I was 14, my parents uh, were separated from me. I, I, I'm a child of, of a, a separated family due to deportation, and it, I mean, it ruined a, a lot, a lot of, uh, it ruined me. Yeah, 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 because you were 14 <laughs> years old. You were I was 14, 14 years old, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and the, poli the, the immigration, INS, ICE came and took away your parents. And That's right, and I had to grow up on my own, and I had to make very, very difficult decisions on my own throughout my entire life. Can you imagine a kid just left alone at 14 to raise himself so crazy? Not right. Not and okay. Not okay, and I, I've, I mean, I've gone through a lot of therapy, and I'm still going through therapy, and I'm, um, you know. Oh, beautiful. I've, I've, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. On my community to support me in this, and I have been very candid. I wrote a book in 2016 about Good my experience you. in the country. Yes, thank you. Um, my family and I were separated like for 20 years. I mean, I've been able to go back, but they haven't been able to come here. And so, um, you know, pandemic happened, and I was like, what am I going to do here? Like, die in LA by myself? Um, so I bought a farm in the mountains of Colombia, <laughs> and I'm now I'm living there. Um, my dad sadly passed away a year ago but oh, I'm sorry to hear that. thank you so much but my mom is there I'm, I'm close to my family and no one's ever going to separate us ever again. Oh good for you, good for you. Yeah. Um, now I, I also hear that you're the leading actor who uh, recently joined no you joined a whole bunch of leading actors in the visionary alliance of the national hispanic media coalition mm -hmm. i had to read that because that's a i'm not the leading title. actor you're yeah. not the leading actor no i'm not the leading actor i'm one of the actors oh one there. of them okay <laughs> yes and then and what is the mission statement of the coalition look in i'll give you numbers yeah. i'm not a, i'm not a math girly but i'll give you some yeah. numbers and in 2022 only three women of color directed a top 100 What? film in the span of 16 years okay 21 female directors women of color directors directed 21 films out of 1600 films that's crazy I'm not a math girly, like I right, said. Right. And, and, and people of color are f at least 40% of the population, if not a lot more, because white people are only 59% of the population. Right, right. So I mean, then... that's getting into more numbers than I rehearsed. Oh, but, yeah. <laughs> but well, I'm, a, I'm a math boy. You are a math boy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, all I know is that that's cultural apartheid. Yes. Right? For and real, I know that's a real. term that you use a lot, and I follow you, and I follow your work. Thank you so much, Johnny Lutz, yeah. for doing that. Oh, yeah, yeah. Doing oh, the good yeah, work yeah, for exactly. us yeah. and inspiring me to do the work that I'm doing alongside you. Um, what I, we I need allies, and we need people like you. Absolutely. We need soldiers out there. Thank you. We want representation. We want, we want, we want the right kind of representation. We're tired of the only things getting made about us, drug lords, Negative. criminals, yeah, c cops. Right, right. Um, maids, maids, hookers. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> right. What we 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 want to be represented as we are: real, beautiful, curious. Uh, you know, existential crises yeah. happen. Preach, preach, mama, preach. And and yes, maybe. <laughs> And yes, maybe even mediocre. Right, and right, if, someday. If sometimes, right? And if somebody. Because white people to, get to be mediocre all the time. All the time. Oh my God. I mean, I'm jealous because white people get to fail upwards. Just peruse. Just peruse. I can barely succeed upwards. Uh, agreed. Likewise. Just peruse through the canning, the canon of like mediocre films of oh dysfunctional God. white World. families. Uh, Jack, Jack and Jill. <laughs> yeah, no, a the canon is rich. <laughs> yeah, yes, okay? it is. We deserve to be yeah, allowed to fail exactly, on camera, people. Exactly. I Can we fail in big movies. Uh, yes. can, can I want to make crap on television, yes. on streaming. I want to be like white people. I want to make um, mammoth, woolly mammoth meatball crap. Yes. And get paid for and it. And get paid for Ain't it. Ain't nobody paid for it, uh, test to do that. Exactly. We have to work really well in sushi kitchens, pizzerias. We got to cook yes. all the food for this goddamn country. Just like we deserve to be excellent, we deserve to make crap as well. Yeah, yeah. And everything in between. People assume uh, Latinos are a monolithic group, and uh, and we're not. We're very fa faction, just generational, generationally. Uh, uh, and I think that there's an assumption that we vote democratically, and uh, and both parties shouldn't take the Latino vote for granted. I think that both parties need to do a better job at 
um, really understanding Latino issues are American issues. The number one issue Latinos care about is the economy. Number one issue Americans care about, the economy. You know, people make the assumption, you know, we only care about immigration or we only care about citizenship. And and that's part of it. And that's definitely an important issue. Uh, but it but it's uh, we share the same values as all Americans. We want to have economic mobility. We want to uh, have the opportunity and the infrastructure of opportunity in our communities to move ahead and, and have progress, generational progress in our families. With that in mind, I have to ask you about Momento Latino. What is it all about? Yes, Momento Latino is, um, it translates to the Latin moment, uh, but it is a a coalition of of activists and leaders and business people. And it's about lifting up uh, uh, our voices within the Latino community right now, because we are one of the most affected communities uh, due to COVID. And again, uh, you know, COVID didn't cause these problems, but they've exasperated a lot. And so, um, you know, Despite being 18% of the population, Latinos make up 35% of essential workers. That's wow. that's healthcare workers, farm workers, drivers, um, delivery people, grocery store stockers. Uh, you know, there's uh, we over-index on essential workers. Mm-hmm. Uh, farm workers have have kept the American food supply going going all the time, and, and we didn't we didn't need a pandemic to say farm workers were essential. They've always right. been essential. Farm workers have always been essential to this country and the food supply of this country. And now they're forced to go to work without PPE, without hand sanitizer, uh, with very enclosed living conditions. Despite all of this, we keep going to work. And um, I think it's just important that uh, Momento Latino pushes for change and is around after this pandemic. 